Live from Orlando, Florida, you're listening to the Orlando Magic HQ podcast, the voice of Magic fans. Join us every week for a unique fan perspective on all of the latest Magic news and updates. The show starts now. Welcome back to another episode of the Orlando Magic HQ podcast brought to you by the Believe Podcast Network and Bet Online. We're your host, Al, myself, Anthony. Today is Friday, June 28th, and uh, this isn't just any normal, regular episode, man. Uh, a bunch of celebration is in order, not just because the Magic did decide to pick to keep their 18th pick in the NBA draft and draft in Tristan Da Silva out of Colorado, not just because of that, although that is a, a very good bonus and gift, and we'll talk more about that a little bit. Um, but it's because it's our 200th episode. Oh, we we really need to do like we we need one of those boxes where we press a button and then there's 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 applause. And we need <laughs> we need some type of sound effects. But 200th episode, Al. This is the 200th <laughs> time you and I have recorded talking about our 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 faithful Orlando Magic team. Um, I don't want to spend too much time kind of reminiscing or or going too deep into our heart and our thoughts and our feelings, but 200 is is it's a lot of episodes to record. The amount of consistency, the amount of hard work, the amount of sacrifice, the amount of uh, roller coaster. Uh, didn't matter if we've been we were playing our best basketball, our worst basketball. We still managed to you know be as consistent as possible and. And be able to share, uh, you know, our thoughts on on, you know, this this team that we we're so passionate about, and we're we're so grateful for all the the people out there that tune into us week in and week out. Um, it, it, I'd be remiss if we didn't take a moment just to say thank you so much. Um, Two hundred episodes, it is it's crazy. Two zero zero, dude. It's 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 surreal to me that we've come this far. Uh, to your point, doing it while covering the team in some of its darkest hours, right? Like we're coming of a, a great season, no doubt about it. But let's not let's not kid ourselves. We, we went through a rebuild. We went through the pandemic. Um, that was really the height of the show, right? When we kind of grew the most is the pandemic, all the guests that we had back then. Um, I'm going to keep it short and sweet, man. Just thank you to all you guys that tune in every week, all the messages that we get. Uh, when we go to games, you guys that come in and, and say hi to us. Um we do it for you guys, right? We love talking about the magic, but ultimately we love doing this to share our thoughts and, and, and opinions on the team, but ultimately because you guys enjoy it. We keep hearing about it all the time and that gives us the energy. Those days that you may not want to record, those days that you may be like, man, the team is just, I don't know, I don't want to do this today. We still show up for you guys. So thank you guys for keeping us going. Um, 200 is a lot. Let's not kid ourselves, but uh, there's a lot more to come. And hopefully, hopefully, a lot more episodes coming up to celebrate what should be a much better and improved Orlando Magic team. So that's the exciting part. Yeah, thank you for all the engagement. Um, it's it's really the reason why we do this. Uh, originally, when Al slid in my DMs and was like, "Hey, you want to start a podcast?" It, it was something that you know it it, it took a lot of um, time, effort, planning, and the fact that you know 200 episodes later, we're We've been able to really grow and establish this thing, and it's it's been absolutely beautiful. It's exactly what we wanted. Um, and and listen, we're not the most analytical. We we're not breaking down anything. We're not we're not pros. We're really just two friends, just talking about the team that we that we love, man. And and I we appreciate every single listener that has you know been on this ride with us, and it's awesome because we've always talked about, man. Can you imagine? you know, how it's going to feel us finally recording, you know, this podcast and this team is, is actually winning and, and it's a good product on the, on the floor. And the fact that we, that we're here and we we have this awesome team that now we're rooting for makes it just that much more sweeter and gives us more, um, you know, motivation to do it for another 200 episodes, get to 400. Um, but with that, with that being said, we, we want to celebrate the 200, um, by doing a giveaway. Al, do you want to break that down? Yes, sir. So we're going to keep it really, really simple for you guys. If you're listening to the show, um, all we're asking for, and let me actually start with the price, right? So the price, we, we want to keep it simple, sweet, and to the point. We want to give a winner um, a $200 
Orlando Magic Team Shop gift card. We don't want to, you know, limit yourselves to a jersey or, you know, shirts and hats. You choose whatever you want. So $200 gift card to the Orlando Magic Team Shop. If you live locally, we can mail that in to you. If you live internationally, we can send it to you via email. So that is the price. And all that we're asking for is go to our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe and simply comment on this episode, our 200th episode. Comment the number 200. It's that simple. So join in the celebration. We're going to choose a winner here um, by our first summer league game. So we're giving people plenty of time to join in and participate. We want to make sure that all you guys get it in. And again, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to us, just quickly take a second, go on YouTube, search Orlando Magic HQ, go find this episode. And again, it'll be right there for you to simply re- uh, reply, comment, 200. So best of luck to everyone. Uh, again, should be a nice gift here with a new rookie to buy a jersey for potentially, or hey, maybe Clay Thompson, Paul George, KCP. Get that customized jersey. <laughs> you want to make sure you never trade in that jersey ever. Get that customized jersey. You pick the number. You pick the. You pick your name. Put your own name on the back. A lot of options, man. But uh, when you go to YouTube, don't just stop there. The whole Orlando Ma- Magic HQ team. We got a lot of content that's out there. Got Steven that just dropped on the Close Up Magic podcast, just dropped his um, episode with Jason Bede uh, from the Orlando Sentinel last week. Um, our guy BJ, he was um, uh, in the presser yesterday, um, front action, boots on the ground, just dropped his uh, article, the Orlando Magic struck gold landing, Tristan De Silva, so make sure you go check that out. It should be dropping a YouTube video soon. Um, and then you got our spaces guys, man. They've been putting in a lot of really good work on Bleacher Report and doing their uh, their live videos. So um doesn't matter how you consume your Orlando Magic content. We got something for you. So just make sure you check it out. Um, but uh, enough enough with that. Let's let's get into our our reactions, right? Tristan De Silva drafted by the Orlando Magic. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but we're also going to talk about free agency. Free agency starts. On Sunday and the rumor mill, it is it is flowing, man. And there's there's a lot of uh, speculations of what the Magic may do, how much the Magic may spend, um, you know, how many years. That's that's a big talk of the town right now. Um, and we're gonna break down what we've been hearing um, in just a moment. But before we get into that, quick word from our sponsor, Bet Online. BetOnline is your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season, from baseball, golf, soccer, right to all the top fights in UFC, MMA, and boxing. Every set, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino, get in on a game of blackjack or poker, or unwind with one of our 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in into the action. Use promo code Believe for your fifty percent free bet credit on your first deposit up to two hundred and fifty dollars. Bet online. The game starts here. So, um, where before we even got to the draft, Al, um, you and I we were pretty confident that you know the Magic we're we're not going to keep this pick right. There, there was a there was a a, a pit in my stomach. Almost because once we started getting to, you know, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and things aren't coming through, I- I'm sending you messages like, man, we're we might just really we might keep this pick. Like this, this might happen. We're we're hearing all the different trades that are happening. I mean, it was it was a little slower. We not a whole lot of movement, but um, we we didn't hear a whole lot of talks. There wasn't any. Uh, you know, specific room. There was there was no communication, nothing at all, and it it started to feel like, man, the magic might keep it. As we got closer and closer and closer to that pick, you know, you had uh uh the the guard from Duke, uh, McCain. You had um you know uh, connect. You had uh you know uh the Silva, which is a player that you've mentioned in previous episodes that you you've liked. Uh, so good shout out there, but. You know, it got to a point where, you know, the the thing about Tristan is is he he is an Orlando Magic player. There's a lot of things that he does that fits the Orlando Magic mode. And, you know, the the more I thought about it afterwards, um, you know, I, I'm I'm happy that we decided to keep the pick and not trade. It makes me curious to think that um 
because obviously shooting is a big weakness for the Orlando Magic, it would have been interesting to see if Tristan was really our guy or if he was just kind of, uh, you know, the the best left over. Because, you know, there, there was a lot of hype around Connect. I, I, I believe everyone that I, I, I was looking at online, that's that's who everyone wanted. And what makes this draft a little special for me is the fact that we've done no research on this draft. Nothing. <laughs> I I honestly without without looking online, I couldn't even tell you who the number one pick is. I can't I couldn't pronounce his name. I can't even tell you what he really looks like. I, I've I've followed and I don't know if it's more of the fact that I didn't have a horse in the race early on because I, I truthfully, truthfully felt like we were gonna move the pick or the draft was really that weak that, you know, there there just wasn't a whole lot of star power. Or it could be a mix of both. Um, but the fact that, you know, this was a player that we have talked about in the past and the Magic ended up going with this player and not somebody random like, you know, someone that we didn't even think about, like a Jay Howard last year, right, that caught us by surprise. Um, it, it does make it special because this is a player that definitely feels like it it fits. So what what were your initial thoughts when... You know, you you sent me the text message yesterday, like he's still on the board, he's still on the board, magic don't mess this up, and then you heard his name. Well, like you mentioned, my expectation was we're gonna pick someone random. Like it always happens, right? And how many years if you've been listening to this podcast for two hundred episodes, every single draft I have my list of guys that I'm like, those guys will be perfect in Orlando. And then we go and don't get those guys. It just happens every year. Um It's tradition at this go. point. It is, right? So this is the first time that I feel like I had a guy that I kind of liked and the Magic actually did it. They ended up drafting him. Um, but to your point, there were some other guys that were around that pick that were still available that I'm like, wait, if those guys fall to 18, will we actually pick them? Or is Tristan the guy that we really, really want? And I, I mean, part of me after hearing uh, mostly speak and, and Weltman yesterday after the draft and them speaking so highly, not only of the player that he is, but also how well he did in the interview process, makes me believe that he was their pick. So even if another guy that should have been a top, I don't know, 12th guy would have dropped to us, I still think they would have drafted him. And you know why I think that? Because just like last year, Jahawar got picked early. We were all like, why? That was their guy for whatever oh, reason. Okay. Yep. So I think that that was the case. And by the way, man, we got to pause for a second and give a huge shout out to our front office. We give him a hard time for not drafting shooters. But guess what? Guess what? Look back at the last few drafts. You think about, you know, Caleb Houston, Chet Howard, Tristan Da Silva, our guys, all our guys that shot a ton of three-point shots in, in college, made a good percentage of them. So they're trying. It's just probably taking us longer than we've wanted for them to address the shooting when it comes to like a free agency move or a trade. But they're developing those guys. Um, Jalen Suggs, major boost last year. Paolo as well. So shout out to, to the front office, man. If Franz can some way somehow fix that shot and start hitting threes again, and all these other guys that we are either drafting or developing also hit their stride, man, that's going to be exciting. But going back to the draft, I think they got it right. 6'8", 200 pounds. I mean, fits right in. I saw some tape on this kid and reminds me of Franz Wagner. Just the way that he cuts the basket, passes the ball well, shoots the ball well. Decent defender, more of a team defender, not so much individually. But some of those things are things that we heard about Franz Wagner coming out of college. And we were like, okay, that's all great and all, but what's the hype? I think the hype is that as a team player, when you put him out there on the court with Paolo, Franz, whoever else, he's going to shine because he'll do his role really, really well. Individually, I don't think he'll be an all-star. I don't think he'll be a starter even maybe in this league. But he'll be a solid 3 and D guy that, that, again, will make the game easier for Paolo and Franz. So really excited with the pick. Again, wanted him from the jump. The fact that we got him, that's exciting. Yeah, I mean, big in size. Six foot eight, maybe six nine with shoes. Six foot ten wingspan. Um, but that that's just the start of him, man. Uh, you know, during the press conference, uh, Jeff Waltman was was talking a little bit about, you know, this was a, a going into the draft. There were There were four boxes that that you know they they were looking for and this was a player that was able to check all those boxes this is another you know individual who's a good character kid you can tell the way that you know he he carries himself the way his teammates talk about him 
Um, definitely a player that you can plug into your team, and it's not going to mess up any of that team chemistry. He's going to add to it. Um, obviously, the shooting is is a is a big key, is a big factor. You know, shot thirty nine and a half uh, three point percentage off of uh, what almost five attempts. So this is a player that you know is able to impact the game immediately, and not not just by uh, you know statistics and, and shooting statistics but you know this is somebody that that was a four-year senior coming out of Colorado so you know he's 20 23 years old um, this is somebody that is we're expecting uh, to make an impact right now with the team like we're we're expecting for him to to get minutes and this is somebody that we can clearly see that the front office believes that he's able to do it while listening to um you know phil on lockdown magic his his recent podcast um where he's talking about tristan da silva he he brought up a really good point where you know this reminded him of you know when we drafted courtney lee um this is somebody that you know it's it's a it's you know, mature in age, kind of knows what he's able to bring to the table, what his game is, what his role would be, knows himself to where he knows that this is the way that he's going to be able to impact the game. And I love the fact that we went with somebody um, that that's a little bit older. Uh, the Magic are not at a point where we we should be uh, taking on any projects. We're way past that stage. We don't we don't have the capacity. We don't have the bandwidth. Uh, we already have, you know, Anthony Black and Jet Howard, um, and we would even throw in Caleb Houston in there too. Though those are the guys that we're we're developing, right? Um, and you know, drafting a player like like Tristan, uh, I hope that this is a, a indicator that you know the the, uh, the Joe Ingles experiment is is over. Like I hope that we can move on from that. I I I hope that there's better veterans out there that you know, can can help and support in, you know, more ways on the court as much as I like all the attributes that Joe Ingles brings off the court. Um and, you know, I'm I'm excited, man. I'm I'm excited for what the magic um are are gonna do with with this type of player. Um you know summer league is is uh you know obviously a free agency but summer league is gonna be exciting to watch, you know, Tristan and, and Jet Howard and hopefully Anthony Black. It's going to be exciting to see those guys out there playing together and already building, you know, some level of chemistry. Yeah, man. And the fact that he has chemistry also with, again, already knowing. he's. By the way, he's born and raised in Germany. So those that may see the last name may be like, what? He's Brazilian. He has roots from Brazil, actually born and raised in Germany. And um, he actually said that he already has spoken to Franz and Mo Wagner. Uh, his brother actually plays with them in the national team. So the connections are all there. The front office is smart enough to know, hey, we want to bring a rookie, but we want him to be already kind of connected in the locker room a little bit. There it is. Guy that already knows Mo in France, he's he's golden there. Um, so again, in my opinion, man, I think we did a great job in the draft. I truly expected us to trade the pick. That was my initial reaction kind of when Same. we're heading into the draft. Didn't happen. Which I said on our last episode, I think if we keep the pick, keep the pick and actually not trade him the next day or whatever, I feel better about free agency, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. I think it's related to the fact that we may throw the bag at someone and we have to keep cheap contracts on the roster. That's my thoughts behind it. I could be crazy. I could be wrong. That's my thinking. So we'll talk about free agency later, but keep an eye on that because, again, we got a great kid, but at the same time, we got a cheap contract, a guy that's experienced a lot of years in college can shoot it, can play good defense. Again, I think we, we hit a home run there. Yeah, and uh, it, it was cool kind of hearing um, Coach Moles talk about like part part of one of the boxes that, that they were looking to uh, – looking into a player as a player that you know had a high iq they they love his positional versatility they like the fact that he was able to shoot um and you know just watching some of the highlights like everyone else everyone you know dials in and starts doing their research right i am no expert on on tristan de silva but from the little bit that i saw man this is somebody that um again is, is going to be able to get the ball into the hands of of the right player and that's something that he even touched on and, and talked about so it's going to be exciting to see um you know his press conference uh, I, I believe i saw it was at 2 30 p.m on friday mm -hmm. um that they'll they'll be introducing him um you know to the orlando fan base so that's going to be really exciting it did give me a little ptsd seeing him uh seeing the jersey created uh him wearing number 23 
Um, it made me think of Mario Hazonia and how terrible of a train wreck that experiment was. That that experiment was so um, gave me a little PTSD, but I'm I'm excited to see um, you know what what he's able to do. So uh, it's gonna be interesting stuff, man. We didn't go with the Michigan player. That was cool. Um, um, yeah, I think it's gonna be a good fit. He's it from what it from what it looks like. It, it's gonna be a a fun a fun ad. Just thinking about the dynamics of uh, again six foot ten Franz, six foot ten Paolo, six foot ten Wendell, six foot nine Tristan. Like just positionless basketball. Go out there, just run the floor, play hard basketball on both ends, um, and our identity continues to grow. So it's it's a good pick, man. I'm I'm really proud of the front office and what they were able to do. If you were to draft them, if you were to grade them on this draft, what would you give them? See, I'm going to be a little biased, right? Because I wanted the kid. We ended up drafting him. So I'm going to be biased and say I'm going I'm to give him an A just because I really did not think he was going to be there. I really expected either L.A., Miami to draft him just because, again, he's a good system player. And I felt like those teams are competing. They want to win now. I think he would fit in right in, and again, with the Lakers, with the Heat. And they were picking right behind us. So I'm like, uh, I, I think that they might take him before we do. So the fact that we got him, again, to your point already, how the way that he fits in, I think it's a home run for us. So I'm going to give it a, just, again, a little bias probably. What about you? What, what would you give the front office on the job they did um, by drafting him? Um, so I, 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 I feel, so here, here's my thing. My fear with drafting a player was we're already a really young team, right? So adding another young player is going to take us back a little bit. Um, but the fact that, you know, you're, you're bringing in a four-year senior, 23 years old, um, you know, it, it makes me, it makes me feel better knowing that, you know, we're having at least some type of uh, maturity being added into the flux. So yeah, I'll, I'll give them, I'll give them about maybe a B plus a minus. Like, I don't, I don't think we, it's not like we got a player that fell down to us really far. Right. He, this is somebody that was projected around the range and, you know, he, we were available and we were able to take him. Um, but I, I like the decision of keeping the pick because of the scenario. Um, this, in my opinion, this allows us to be more flexible in terms of if we did a trade free agency, like we're able to spend a little bit more money because now we don't have to keep certain players or resign because now we have a really, really cheap contract, um, in Tristan De Silva. So, um, that's, that's. That's that's pretty much it, man. I think I think they did a good job. I'm I'm excited about it. I think the fan base was really excited, and you finally got a pick right in the draft. Congratulations! Finally, it only took 200 episodes, so at least we got it today. That that's that's good timing. <laughs> um, that's right. I got I got to ask you too. So the second round, so no surprises here. I think we all expected the Magic to do what they do every single year, and that is trade the second round pick. Which, by the way, we were on the clock. We're like, hey, we're actually gonna keep it. Site. Shams tweeted right away saying, nope, the Magic are trading the pick to the New Orleans Pelicans for the right to swap a 2030 and a 2031 second round pick. So basically the best um, second round pick between ours and the Pelicans, we have the right to swap. Um, with that being said, quickly touch upon this. Thoughts on that? Were you surprised by the move? Are you happy what they did with the pick? What are your thoughts on the second round pick? Yeah, bye. We don't we don't need it. Like this is it's not the it's not the stage that we're at. Um I think uh Jason Bede had, had tweeted out earlier today that between now and the next what eight, nine years we have thirteen second round picks. Like it it's it is something that, you know, it's could you have brought in a player and sent him to Osceola? Sure you could have, but I personally, I think it would have been unfair to that specific player. Uh, again, the bandwidth just, just it's not, it's not there. So trade, trade the second round picks. It's not the first time that we've done it. Uh, I'm surprised. If anything, it's an upgrade that we just didn't do it for cash considerations. Normally, we like to sell those off for money. Um, I'm, I'm good with it. Not disappointed. Not surprised whatsoever. Really sorry for anyone that was watching the second round to, uh, today, uh, th Thursday evening, and uh, waiting to see who the Magic were going to pick just for them to trade it off. So good with yeah, it. No, Indifferent. I, I, I agree with you. I'm the same way. I think that it was the right move. We don't need another young guy. I know people might say, hey, you could have drafted someone that then you can send to, you know, Osceola, two-way contract. We'll find somebody else. Trust me. Again, this, this wasn't a deep draft where – 
in my opinion, whoever you can get in the second round or after someone that didn't get drafted, the talent pool, I think, is pretty similar. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, again, whoever we drafted in the second round was not going to see minutes next year. That's just my honest opinion. So punt that for, for the future. Let's see what happens. Tristan De Silva. Exciting, man. We're exciting. Exciting time to be an Orlando Magic fan. Um, and now we, we look into free agency on Sunday. So the rumor mill. We we keep hearing the new name that's been brought into the mix now is is KCP, right? Yeah, you know, it was just reported that he declined his player option um, from the Denver Nuggets, a fifteen point four million dollar player option that he opted out of. So now he becomes a free agent. Um, you know the the talk of the town right now, the the rumors that we've been seeing is that the Magic is willing to offer. Thompson or KCP, a short-term big money deal starting at two years for 50 mil. Um, that was according to Matt Moore of Action Sports. Um, and I, I guess my question to you is, you know, the the big name that everyone was kind of clinging on to was Malik Monk, right? That, that was that was the, for a lot of people, that was their number one guy on, on their list of players to add, right? Malik Monk didn't give any other team a chance. Uh, surprisingly, I was surprised because I, I thought things were mm-hmm. rocky out there uh, between him and the head coach. But uh, surprisingly, he goes back to Sacramento, doesn't give an opportunity to anyone else. So he's off the list, right? Um, Clay Thompson is a player that we're, we're reading and we're learning that, you know, there there's a strong, strong indication that uh, they, they just might be parting ways, even if it's not. Uh, you know, with the magic, wherever it, he's 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 out of there. You know, there's there's already rumblings about Golden State looking to try and find a way to bring Paul George to Golden State um, uh, inside of a Golden State Warriors uniform. So um, it, it's starting to look like definitely for sure Clay Thompson is leaning towards elsewhere. The issue with Clay Thompson is that he's looking for a three year deal. He's wanting to do the three. Uh, Golden State didn't seem like they were willing to give him the three year. It doesn't look like the Magic are looking to do that either. So that that kind of puts that situation uh, a little more complicated uh, because of the year factor. In my opinion, I, I hope that this is all true 100 percent because I don't I don't want us to give anyone a three year deal. Uh, I think that we need to maintain our flexibility. Uh, I think that for us. Two years is is a good time span for us to be able to see exactly where this team is at, who's fitting, who is not. Gives Anthony Black an opportunity to develop, Jay Howard an opportunity, Tristan now an opportunity to develop, um, and then you kind of see where where you're at, right? Um, and I and I think that I hope the Magic can can stay strong on that. But if Clay Thompson is on the board. What are your thoughts on KCP? Is that somebody that you would throw, you know, twenty five million dollars a year at? That's that's a tough part, right? So, to me, the way that I see it, KCP, no doubt about it, a better defender today. He's two years, three years younger than Clay Thompson. He is definitely an improvement over today's version of Gary Harris, a lot more reliable. So he plays. He he barely ever misses games since he got into the league. So. From a health standpoint and an improvement standpoint, it helps, right? He is better today than than Gary Harris would be. My only concern is, to your point, $25 million for KCP. Is he worth that kind of money? I I guess on a short-term deal, to your point, two-year, $50 million, let's say. Maybe, sure. But I'm asking a quick question. Is KCP what we need? When When you think about what he brings to the table, a great shooter, a solid defender. I'm assuming he'll start at the two. So Jalen Suggs and him will be incredible playing defense There's against all no the cards. There's no way you pay him $25 million doesn't start. There's no way. Exactly. So my question to you is, if, you, if, this, was, if this happened, so 6.30, 6.35 on Sunday night, we get a tweet from Watch saying the Magic have signed KCP for two years, $50 million, whatever it may be. Are you thrilled, pumping your fist, like, man, we did it? This is exactly what we needed? Or are you like, Oh man, I kind of wish we got someone that can produce a little more offense. Because I think that's the thing that I'm kind of leaning towards. Like, I think we need more offense, right? That's what Paolo and France need. I don't think nobody's scared by KCP having the ball in his hands, other than a catch and shoot situation. So, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think he fits in 
to what the team needs besides shooting and, and defense, because I know they value that a lot. But the scoring punch, you see what we need. Yeah, I mean, do we need him to do more than just catch and shooting? This is my this is my argument, right? Paulo Bancaro is is looking to improve. Hey, he's he's already talked about it. Mike Miller's already talked about it. Like they want to get to a point where Paulo Bancaro is averaging, you know, above thirty points a game. Like that's that's what he's working towards, right? So obviously that's going to be more offensive, um, yeah, more more game coming from Paulo. Franz Wagner had a somewhat of a down year, so we're expecting more from him. Jalen Suggs developed tremendously on the offensive end had a better offensive year i'm expecting another better year coming from him um you really want to be able to have somebody that can be a knockdown shooter um and and even if it's just something that he just turns into it like i'm not going to sit here and tell you that i've seen a whole lot of kcp in denver um or in washington or in la but i can tell you that he's a two-time champion uh and he shoots you know close to 40 percent from the three-point line so you know, there's not too many players like that available in free agency. Um, I don't think that he should be our main target, uh, no matter what we believe in Clay Thompson, no matter you know how many people out there disagree. He should be our number one target. His, reputa- his uh, uh, reputation by itself opens up the floor drastically. This is somebody that can, can really light it up on days at Paulo Bancaro because we saw it last year where Paulo Bancaro had some rough games where he couldn't get it going. We saw that more times than we wanted, uh, you know, with with Franz Wagner. So on the days that, you know, Franz isn't feeling it, Paulo isn't feeling it, Jalen Suggs isn't feeling it, you know, you can rely on Klay Thompson to maybe step into those moments. The issue with Golden State is that they were needing him to do that consistently. We don't need him to do that as often as he did in Golden State. Uh, maybe even a quarter, right? We we just need to be able to have when these teams are game planning, they can't leave Clay Thompson. They they can't triple team Paulo Bancaro because they need to put a body on Clay Thompson because this dude can drop thirty points in one quarter. He's done it time and time again. Um, so in in my opinion, I as much as much as I say that you know I don't want us to give up more than two years. I also would be flexible for a player like Clay Thompson on maybe a three year team option, like meet us in the middle somehow, some way. Like I would feel more comfortable giving Clay Thompson twenty five mil than I would KCP. Like KCP has two championships, but Clay Thompson got more. Like <laughs> Clay Thompson is you bring Clay Thompson to the magic and that that's that's uh that's a Hollywood ad. That's that's putting respect on the Orlando Magic name and and in my opinion, you bring in a player like Clay Thompson, you sign him in free agency. Now you're proving that this is a free agent, a free agency destination because you just you just got you just pulled Clay Thompson away from Golden State Warriors. Like that's not that's not an easy feat to do. And I feel like that would trickle down and that would start, you know, um, uh, uh, hopefully, um, you know, an avalanche of like this is this is a team that big names would want to come to so in my opinion uh you you try to get clay first if you miss out on clay there's really there's there's not a better shooter out there than kcp outside of clay so i, th- I think me and you're on the same page then because that's that's my thinking also right so clay thompson is like the superstar move the star move again the, the hollywood kind of signing kcp in my opinion is a safe move now to add context to this so vegas which not very often is wrong when it comes to betting odds, currently has the Magic as favorites, which is surprising. It used to be we were tied with the Warriors before. Now we're actually the favorites, according to Bovada and DraftKings, to get Klay Thompson in free agency. So whatever you want to take with that, go ahead and take it. Another thing is that Klay supposedly is frustrated with the way the Warriors have handled his contract negotiations. And again, he has until... Saturday to agree to a deal with them. Otherwise, he's a free agent. So all that to say, in my opinion, I'm like you. I, I'll, I'll add this, though. I still think he goes back to the Warriors. For whatever reason, something tells me him and Steph breaking up this lane to the career. I would love it if he came to the Magic. Trust me. I just don't see how he leaves the Warriors. But if he does, 
He's my number one target right now. Paul George will be amazing. I would love Paul George for the Magic. I think he goes either to the Warriors, stays with the Clippers. I don't see him leaving um, the West Coast. Again, Klay Thompson, in my opinion, people might say he's older. People might say, oh, the injury history most recently. Man, he's just coming off a season where he played 77 games. The year before that, 69. Oh, yeah, 2021, he only played 32, of course. That's when he had all the injuries. So... Only once in his career has he played less than 66 games, and that is that season. So compare that to who we had last year at the shooting guard position, Gary Harris, who, again, barely ever played. He would get hurt every other game. So whether you sign Clay, whether you sign uh, KCP, you're getting a, a solid two that can shoot the ball really well, can hit the free throws, can play solid defense. Let's see what happens. But my opinion is if you have the chance to have a meeting with Clay Thompson, and bring him to Orlando, you can't pass that up. That's just my opinion. Yeah, and listen, you ha you have somebody like Steve Kerr that he is coming out publicly and saying that he he wants he wants to keep Clay Thompson. Like he has made it abundantly clear to the Golden State Warriors organization that he wants to bring Clay Thompson back. So there is kind of a, a push and pull. Uh in my opinion, I, I think you know, it's it's a different it's a different regime in Golden State. I I think they're they're ready to do something different. Like you can't you can't do that with Steph Curry, but with a player like Clay Thompson, you you can try to push him out. I'm actually surprised that Clay would be the first one uh, to leave. Um, I always thought it was going to be Draymond Green, just because of Me too. the amount of headache that he has given that organization. I I, I really thought that he was going to be the first one, um, but. I mean, it's, it's coming it's coming to a point where uh, Zach Lowe reported that he believes that the Warriors are emotionally prepared to move on from Clay. Um, my issue is that you know, if let's say that Clay did uh, decide to sign with us, I wonder what that's going to be like for him. Like, it's it's going to be an adjustment for him. Um, you know, the transition itself. I, I don't believe that he, in his heart, wants to leave. I feel like in a, in his heart, he has to leave. Um, I feel. Like maybe some part of him even feels a little disrespected. I think so. Um, and I, I'm I'm just looking right now. If you if you Google, if you go on Google, type in Clay Thompson's name real quick. The first thing that pops up is is an article from Heavy.com that says uh, Golden State Warriors Clay Thompson is predicted to land a hundred million dollar deal. So what? when I read that, I'm like, from who? Because <laughs> the Magic ain't given that. So um, although Vegas has, you know. Us with with the biggest odds, and you know the house never likes losing. Um, I am skeptical. Like I, I, I'm also not foolish in the thought of, you know, we we've given Rashard Lewis, you know, that crazy contract, you know, back in the day. But it's because, you know, we're we're trying to we're trying to earn him. So I I I, I think that the Magic might have to overpay a little bit. And honestly, for a player like Clay Thompson, who the so the the drawback right is that yeah people joke around about him going you know over ten in the playoffs whatever like I that I'm not worried about like a shooter's gonna shoot like you're you're not you're not gonna go I'm not gonna take just a couple games towards the back end of from a player that was already frustrated with this with this situation right I'm not I'm not gonna hold that against him the injury part is where I'm I'm a little concerned about like that's a lot of money to give to a player that has really struggled with a very serious injury hello grant hill right um but uh, again sometimes we 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 got to take a risk i think that the magic have done a good job um with this past season not talking anything before this past season just the past season with how they handle jonathan isaac um the part that would be frustrating is you know Jonathan Isaac's contract compared to what we would play Clay Thompson, like you, you could, you know, you're you're gonna baby Clay Thompson way more than you ever did with Jonathan Isaac because that's that's your investment, like that's who you're expecting to to kind of carry you farther, right? Um, so that that would that would probably be the only uh, you know, cause of concern that I would have. Um, but I I I a part of me. Doesn't feel like Clay Thompson wants to leave, but all the reports are saying that he's been extremely frustrated with how the Warriors have handled his contract negotiations. He's ready to be out, um, and if that's the case, I think the Magic might have to pull that trigger. If they got to pony up a little bit more, I think it might be time to spend that money. 
And don't forget, he just followed Paulo on uh, Instagram. Uh, he I does can't, not I, follow. Drives me absolutely insane that this is even a conversation that we have to have because of you know the day and age that that we live. Yep. Because everyone is doing like Isaiah Hartenstein. He's he's following everybody and their mom, man. Following yep. people from OKC, following people from the Magic. Like it's 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 it can easily be turned and utilized as a strategy, right? It definitely, and that, can. that's a part that kind of pisses me off a little bit because uh, you don't you don't want Paul George like I I feel like Paul George talking highly about the Magic as much as he's had is is a is a strategy like. Mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to utilize us so that they can get a couple extra dollars on their contract and social media without talking about it because you know you don't want to get fined uh, is 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 one hell of a clever way to do that. Yeah, that now the only tricky part with uh, with Clay also is he unfollowed the Warriors and he deleted a bunch of pictures with the Warriors, like wow. the, the championship uh, run when they beat the Celtics a couple of years ago. All that's deleted, so. Let's see what he happens. Does, the cool but, thing is, but here, but here's the thing: he doesn't care. Like, he doesn't. you think that that's you think that that's his real IG page? That's nah. that's his commercial IG page. All those pictures, I'm sure he has a personal IG page that he only has for his friends, his family. I'm sure he still has all that over there for him to keep <laughs> as his own personal oh, yeah. collection. But the the one that's available for the world, man, you don't care. Delete that. <laughs> all for the contract. So this is my prediction with Clay Thompson in particular. If you're the Magic, you get on the phone on Saturday, and he's somewhat intrigued to come to Orlando. I would feel comfortable. You tell me what you think about this. I would feel comfortable saying, Jeff, offer this guy a three-year, $90 million contract, declining every year, with the clauses that, that a Jonathan Isaac's contract has, which is it doesn't become fully guaranteed until January. That way, God forbid, he has an injury of any kind and he becomes worse, you can void his contract. That's the same way that we did it with, with uh, J.I. We paid him a bunch of money, but it was very, very uh, insured, let's call it, in the event that he got hurt again. So I would do the same thing with Clay. Heck, I would even throw a four-year team option in there to make him happy. But the thing is, man, to your point, you got to overpay. If somebody like Clay Thompson comes to Orlando, we're now on ESPN. We're now going to be talked about there's more that comes to Orlando with a guy of, of, of his stature. It's not just, oh, a shooting guard that we just signed. It's a four-time champion, has a commercial backing behind him. Again, it, it, it makes sense. Is it going to happen? I don't know. I'm just saying, if I was Jeff, Anthony Parker, I go out there and say, you know what, let me overpay a little bit, declining contract, add some insurance to it. Let's see what happens. If there's one thing that you can confidently hang your hat on is – Jeff Waltman has this this knack, this way of making sure that financially we're in a good we're in a good place with these contracts that we're we're protected. Like our our future is not compromised, our future is not mortgaged. We're not tied into a bad contract. Now one player is tied into a bad contract. Everything has been in our favor, and I don't see why that that would change. And I and I believe that there there should be. And hopefully will be a happy median. And if not, then KCP is right there for the taking. Um, I, another player that we've we and we've briefly touched base on him, but Isaiah Harnstein. Knicks are unlikely to retain him. Um, the Knicks ended up greatly improving their roster. Kudos to them. They mortgaged their their future um, in a in a massive trade to bring you know four former players uh whole when they brought in Mikael Bridges um man it's a it's a cool story I'll be honest with you it's it's a cool story um as much as I I I, I, will, I wish it were a west coast team because I, I feel like I would root for something like that but since they're on the east coast you know I hope you know that it's a train wreck and it just <laughs> doesn't work out um but you know they they also signed OG to another massive contract. They were able to keep him. So they've definitely have have bolstered up their their team. And, you know, there there may not be space for, you know, their young center. So um, you know, the Thunder and the Magic are the teams who are expected to show interest. 
you really got to pay attention to the wording when they when these reports come out they said that the thunder and the magic expect to show interest not that we have this season we have shown interest in the past um so this is somebody just to kind of keep your eye on but man that that would be an awesome awesome ad in free agency if you can bring a player like that um to your team you know it, it would it would be great competition because people automatically assume like you you bring in Harnstein that you you got to get rid of Wendell Carter and I don't I don't see it that way I I see have them both battle it out to see you know who's who's going to be the starter like why why do you have to get rid of Wendell Carter and his awesome contract you know you might have to kind of figure some things out with you know Mo Wagner and and whatever the case may be but you know I I think that that would be an awesome addition yeah, man, I think the biggest thing to, that I like about him is the guy just plays hard. He's another kind of Mo Wagner type. He just plays hard, goes for rebounds, protects the rim. Um, a, a bit different, quite a bit different, actually, than uh, Wendell Carter. Now, don't forget, a couple of years ago, we almost signed him before he went to the Knicks. Like, it was a done deal, it seemed like. Mark Stein was reporting that we were going to sign him. And then something fell through, and he went to the Knicks. We ended up getting Mo Bamba back. So there's some interest there from the past. So keep an eye on this one. And don't forget, we got enough money that we can pay, you know, Clay Thompson, let's say, uh, a, a lot of money and have enough to offer to him to come to Orlando. So that would be a massive offseason if we were able to come in and come out of it with Clay Thompson and uh, Harstein. But let's see what happens, man. I, I, I'm not going to get my... my uh, magic fandom in the middle of all this and get excited about things that haven't happened yet my rule has been this off season until things don't happen i'm not going to celebrate i'm not going to enjoy it so let's see what happens but if we can get him i'll be i'll be thrilled yeah and then another name that we heard was kind of left field but landry shamit has drawn exploratory interest from multiple teams including the magic um and here here's the thing when we ended up signing joe ingles in my opinion that was so left field not a player that i was even on my board of of you know possibilities um it, it was it was not that it was random because the magic have been linked to joe ingles in the past um but didn't even think of it as an option so when i see landry shaman's name I, it kind of puts me in a place of that like it's a it's a very random player that that we could add and in my opinion is only a player that you add if you completely strike out on clay thompson on kcp you know this is somebody that's still serviceable but not my first second third or fourth option same here man i don't know where that came from that report i don't see it he's a shooter that's all i can tell you about him and Again, that's, that might be why he's being linked to us, because everyone knows we need shooting. But outside of that, I really don't see it. If anything, Tyus Jones is a guy from Washington that we should be going after. Um, so in my opinion, that kind of came out of nowhere. I don't, I don't see it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, listen, this is just us having a conversation around free agency. We talked about the draft, but you know, it's been it's been a little quiet on the on the trade side. Um, still an opportunity for the Magic to, you know, improve their roster through trade. Um, it'll be curious to see what ends up happening uh, there. Uh, Anthony Parker on, you know, when he was uh, on the show with Brandon Kravitz said, you know, we'll see. Hopefully we can add someone that will allow for us to continue to take steps forward as an organization. Um, anytime I hear anyone from the front office speak, um, they do a really good job of saying a whole lot of words but not saying anything. Jeff Waltman... Yep. You know, in one of his, um, you know, interviews that he was doing, said a whole lot of nothing. 15 minutes. Yeah, nothing. 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 I, I remember watching and, and, you know, texting you and being, uh, being <laughs> like, man, he's really good at what he does. Like, this is, this is straight CIA talk. Like, if this is his way of communicating with somebody else and there's, like, Morse code in the middle of what he's saying... You know, we are completely missing it because he says a whole lot of nothing, which is which is great. I don't say it in a bad way. Um, I say in a in a sense of, you know, if the, if there was any indication that the magic are, you know, full blown lockdown when it comes to their information, 
you know, if, if there was any proof of that was, you know, drafting Paolo Bangero with the number one pick uh, seconds after <laughs> Woj comes out and says that we're going to draft Jabari Smith Jr. Um, so uh, uh, the whole draft process still frustrates me. The fact that we know who's being picked like minutes, yeah, minutes before it actually happens. So it's glad that there was a wrinkle there, but I just want to shout that out. But outside of that, man, um, Magic still need to make some decisions on on our own free agents. Uh, we still don't know what the Magic are going to do with Fultz, Harris, you know, Chuma Gogo. We have in the, we we have ideas, um, but nothing nothing official yet. Um, between any of those guys, do you think that we is there an opportunity? Is there a possibility that we keep any of them? I think there's a world in which we bring back Joe Ingles on a restructured contract. So if he won't be making whatever it was, $12, $15 million anymore, he might be making $5 million. So I, I could see that world where, hey, he's a vet. He was enjoyable to have around. Bring him back, but on a cheaper contract. Um, outside of that, honestly, man, the only other guy that I can definitely see coming back is Mo Wagner, of course. I think Mo Wagner is for sure coming back. So that's where I'm at. I really don't see Gary Harris coming back, especially if we're going to go after Clay or KCP or any other shooting guard out there. Um, Chuma and Goga, out of those two, I think Goga may be able to get a new contract with us. Let's see what happens in free agency first. Uh, But I definitely think that Tristan Da Silva has replaced Chuma in the roster. That's kind of my opinion there. I see a world where we keep Markel. Hmm. Yeah. So, I trust me, I want to. But this is my thing. You got Cole, you got Jalen Suggs, who I guess now is our starting point guard. You have Anthony Black, who wants to have the ball more in his hands. Where does Mike Carroll fit in into all this? You're going to play Jay Howard next season. Um, I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I, I'm just telling you that I can see a world where we do. Do I think that we will? Maybe yes, maybe no. I, I think that, you know, Mark Hill has a you know, a soft spot, like the front or, or excuse me, Jeff Wilman has a soft spot for Mark Hill folks. It's, it's just my personal feeling in, in my gut. Like I, I think that you can bring Mark Hill back in a very, very, very team friendly deal. Um, considering the circumstances, I, I think that there's, there's, uh, maybe an exception based on, you know, cause we, we, we know that cause here, here's the thing, right? The reward would be really high. We know that this year, Mark Hill really struggled with injuries. He, he just wasn't, you know, his normal Mark Hill self. Right. So I don't know. I, I see a world where, where it could happen. I also see a world where, you know, they, they could just decide it's, it's time to move on. But I think out of those players, I, I would, I would definitely say Mark Hill. Joe Ingles, I, I agree with you. I, I think that we'll find a team. We'll find a way to keep him on the team. Um, but, uh, the magic need to do some uh consolidation because it's getting a little uh it's getting a little crowded they do man uh, I, th- I think that's where that's where it leads me to believe that if you bring markel back then you have to decide what do you do with cole anthony what do you do with anthony black like something's got to happen because say markel was like hey yeah let, let me come back i love orlando i want to be back i'll be a third string center uh point guard i don't care i'll just do it cool but then again you still have anthony black that like i said earlier wants the ball in his hands Cole Anthony is a point guard off the bench. And then again, we're assuming that Jalen Suggs will start a point guard next season. It's like to your point, it's a lot of players that need minutes and want the ball in their hands. So you got to consolidate some way, somehow to make it all work. But I wouldn't mind Markel back on a smaller role, no longer seeing him as a starter anymore. Um, but does he want that? That's the question. Yeah. Decisions need to be made by Saturday. Um, Caleb Houston's contract also becomes fully guaranteed on the 30th. Um, and then some additional key dates to remember. Saturday, June 29th, decisions need to be made on our own free agents. Sunday, June 30th, free agency starts at 6 p.m. Um, awesome that they're doing it on a Sunday. We're all off, which is perfect. July 12th um, to the 22nd, Vegas Summer League. We really need to find a year that we actually make it out there to Vegas. Uh, I'm sure that's an awesome experience. And then October 7th. So from July um, 22nd 
to October 7th, we would have to wait into our first NBA preseason game. Obviously, we're going to have some international play that, that will kind of hold us down for a little bit um, until then. But October 21st, last day for the Magic to agree to a contract extension with Franz Wagner and Jalen Suggs. So a lot of decisions to be made in the very, very near future. Um, with the amount of con with the amount of money that some of these players are making, uh, Scotty Barnes uh, just signed a crazy, crazy contract. Um, you know the the new TV deals are are obviously going to change the way that some of these contracts will look. Um, I'm curious to see where the Magic end up falling when it comes to contract extensions for Franz and Jalen, uh, because we're, these numbers might surprise a lot of people. I'll say this, man. I think France is going to get paid way more, if not the max, than what many people are expecting. I know I see a lot of Magic fans saying, no way that France gets what Scotty Barnes got, blah, 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 blah. Reality is, man, like you said, all this TV money that's coming to the NBA, it may not mean much for France, for France to make $30 million next season. So it's wild to think about, but uh, be, be ready because, again, these contracts are going to get ridiculous the way that this TV money is being thrown around. Absolutely. Um Man, Sunday, it's going to be a big day. Find out where the Magic stand in free agency. Um, we're expecting for things to heat up leading up to Sunday. Um, and we'll we'll see what ends up happening. Don't forget to check out OrlandoMagicHQ.com. A lot of content there. Make sure you're following us on our social media uh, pages. And then don't forget to comment 200 on the comment field of this YouTube video. On that note, it's a wrap, man. I appreciate it. All you guys for listening. 200 episodes is absolutely insane. Show is presented by Bet Online. We'll catch you guys in a little bit. For all the latest magic news and updates, visit OrlandoMagicHQ.com and follow us on Instagram at OrlandoMagicHQ and on Twitter at OMagicHQ. Also, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe and leave a five-star review on your favorite listening platform.